everybody. Okay, so this video is about current dividers. So this time, as opposed to a voltage divider, where you want to, like, say you have a voltage source, like say 10 volts, and then you want to split it up into like 2 volts here, and 3 volts here, and 5 volts here. Right, a current divider is you have a current source, and then now we want to split it into different smaller currents. And so that happens in parallel, like this. And then however many, right, so each of these will have a different current here. Okay, and so how do we solve for these currents? We know that they're, they're all in parallel, right? This, this is all the same node up here, and this is all the same node down here. So the voltage across this source is the same as the voltage here, same as here, same as here, right? All in parallel. So what is this voltage? We can get it by reducing this to its equivalent resistance. Right, so just replace these resistors in parallel with a single equivalent resistor. In this, in this example, right, just go like this. However many you have, and then take the reciprocal. Okay, so now we got the equivalent resistance. What is this current? I the way I drew, the way I labeled it was voltage is positive drop going down, the current I drew with the arrow going down. So Ohm's law for this would be positive I R, right? So just move this on the other side. So then we have I1 equals V over R1. And then V we can get from here. Right? In this example, For this picture, right? V is I R, so this goes there. Okay, so then this is, and then you can do the same for each for each resistor. Oh, there should be a one over here, right? etc. So whichever resistor this is. Okay, let's try with some numbers. And then how you would use it is, let's say you have a 4 amp, 4 amp current source. And I have a device, say over here, it has some internal resistance. I don't want to give it 4 amps. Let's say I want to give it 2 amps. So how do I get 2 amps? So then one way is I could make a current divider like this. Right, and then let's say I'll make this 100 ohms and 100 ohms. Right, so then if I do that, what is the voltage here? It's going to be I R, but the equivalent resistance. So I'll write uh, I R equivalent in this example, 4 amps. And what's the equivalent resistance of these in parallel? Less than 100, right? So it'll be 50. So I could have uh, 200 volts right across here. And then how much current here would be V over this, right? So 200 over 200 volts over 100 ohms is 2 amps. And here would be 2 amps. So that's my proposed design. 
right? Like I want to give this device over here two amps. This has some load resistance. I'll just make up a number like 10 ohms, right? So then this is what I want to do. I want to, right, that's two amps there and two amps over here. I forgot to draw the resistor here, right? So two amps here, two amps here. Wait a minute, not really because this is no longer a hundred and a hundred, right? Because I put this load in series, this is now larger than a hundred. In this example, 110. So the circuit looks like 100, 110, right? So this is now more. So what does that mean for the voltage? I thought it was 200 over here, but now what is it, right? It's four amps times these in parallel. So one over 100, and one over 110, and then take the reciprocal. Let me punch that in the calculator. Okay, so it's 52.4. 52.4, so then the voltage is about 210. Right, so with no load, I was getting 200 volts across here and then 2 amps here and 2 amps here but by connecting a load to my circuit I screwed everything up it's no longer 200 volts across it's now 210 I'm drawing it's requiring a higher voltage so then how much current now for each of these legs so the current here I'll call this I1 and I'll call this I load. So I1 is V over R1. Right, so then that's uh, 2.1 amps. Across the load, well I can just say 4 minus 2.1, right, but you can double check if you do 210 over 110 ohms, it'll be 4 minus 2.1, so 1.9. So it's no longer 200 volts with 2 amps here and 2 amps here, not at all. It's 210 volts and I'm getting 2.1 amps here, 1.9 amps here. Not exactly what I was expecting. And then the last step you should check is, I'll let you try it, check the power for this resistor this resistor and then the load because we need to check that nothing burns right so just for each of them you just do right V times I or I squared R or V squared over R right? it's all the same whichever numbers are most convenient Okay, hope that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions and I'll see you on the next video.